Today we're taking an up-close look at one of the most interesting airplanes I've ever seen. From far away, this plane bears resemblance to ultralight aircraft like the Quicksilver. But upon further inspection, some unique design choices come into view. This is the Bathawk, and it has only recently hit the US market as a fierce competitor in the light sport world. Designed for South Africa, the Bathawk was created to serve a noble purpose. In Africa, this airplane is used for patrolling poachers illegally hunting for rhinos and elephants. We use one of these Bathawks uh, to improve our uh, patrol monitoring of the white rhinos uh, and also to help us with anti-poaching. It's built with the strength and power to operate pretty much anywhere in the bush. It has incredible visibility for searching and a large fuel tank to fly for hours on end. The Rotax 912 engine is mounted high and the propeller is protected from rough field debris. The bubble canopy and seating position really reminds me of a helicopter like the Robinson R-22 or R-44. The Bad Hawk works hard in South Africa and get this, it can even be configured with weapons in case it comes across a hostile group of poachers. The Bat Hawk can reach a respectable 80 knots or so and gets off the ground so quick that the runway lengths don't even matter. All of this not only make it great for its South African mission, but it's a fantastic plane for the recreational pilot. And with the side-by-side -side seating, you can share that beautiful view with another person. So let's talk and then go for a flight with Gary Sadowitz, who is the US importer of the Bat Hawk. Behind me is the Bad Hawk R model, which is the latest uh, model for the Bad Hawk. Bad Hawk originated out of New Zealand, actually. It was from the Bantam model, uh, and then it moved to South Africa, and uh, they've evolved it to now what we have the Bad Hawk, and now obviously with the Rotax engine, we have the Ro Bad Hawk R. It's got the Rotax 912 ULS 100 horsepower four stroke engine, which for this size airframe is a lot of engine but it gives it a lot of torque, a lot of lift, and, and you can get up in very short uh, spaces. Uh, there's a lot of them in Africa. They use them for anti-poaching. They're probably one of the most successful tools that they have there. Funnily enough, some of these actually have gunships on them. So when they're going out against uh, the poachers, they actually can, they fire back at them. It's, quite, it's kind of hardcore. But one of the beautiful things about this plane is it's, it's covered in a fabric called Porcha. So even if they had gunshots through the wing, uh, the material such that it doesn't run or rip. So they're actually able to land back safely and not have to worry about it. But, you know, based on the wide landing gear, the low landing gear, you can land in very short places, sandbars, dirt roads, even just grass fields. You can see that the canopy gives you great visibility, almost like a helicopter. And that's really, it's a workhorse in Africa. They, they've actually converted some of them where they do crop spraying. They've got one where they actually put a bed so they can take a passenger on the one side of medic. Africa, obviously, there's not the infrastructure like in, in America. It's also a great fun tool. It's a great aeroplane to fly. Uh, as, you, as you found out today, it was just, you get up there, it's almost being like in a convertible. You can feel the wind, but it's not in your face. She's very stable in windy conditions. She actually handles the turbulence very well. She's not a speed merchant, but she can get off and down in very short sp spaces and very agile. She can turn very quickly. Stall's almost a non-event. It's kind of just mushes, but you... Now, if you don't know you're stalling, you just think you maybe hit some turbulence, which is a lot of fun. My name's Gary. I'm based out of Atlanta, and that's where we have our headquarters for Bad Hawk USA. We're the distributor there. Right now, you can only buy the airplane complete as a finished uh, working flying model. Uh, however, we will be coming out with kits towards the end of the summer. So look out for news on that. So if you're kind of a handyman or want to have a hand in building it, obviously, this is a very easy to build. It's, you know, um, the wings are, are, are kind of like socks, so you just slide it on and ratchet it on, so it's not a long ball time either. But just really, if you kind of like the look of the aeroplane and you just want to fly, fly because it's fun, this is the aeroplane I recommend for you. I mean, a lot of guys are farmers, they'll take the aeroplane, they wake up in the morning, they'll fly around their farm, kind of check their fences, check their livestock, and 30 minutes later, they're back home for coffee. So it's a great way to do your work if you need to do it. How many, but, uh, how many gallons of fuel? So this has a 25 gallon tank and you're kind of burning about five gallons an hour depending on your screw setting. Uh, personally, my body parts don't go that long so I fly maybe two, two hours, two and a half hours. 
but she can fly five hours and, and at about a 70 knot you got about a 350 nautical mile range that's really good actually so the empty weight on it is basically 570 pounds and then you've got a useful load of just over 670 just under 700 pounds so you can have two guys like myself you can fill the tanks and have some luggage and and, and still be and and, and you'll feel she doesn't even struggle to get off the ground. She just flies like it's a normal day and it's, you don't even have an all up weight. So right now at the, you can get one of these for 84,000 and that's with that Rotex 912 year list, which in, in, in this market is pretty compa uh, uh, competitive. Um, but again, it's what you're looking for, but with the Rotex 912 model, you can, you can walk out the door at 84,000. Okay. We don't have a price on the kits. Obviously, the engine's going to be up to the, the builder, so that's going to have a huge significance. So the price of the kits is going to come down significantly. Okay. Um, I just, uh, I don't know that yet, but once we have information on that, we'll be able to update you on that as well. All right, very cool. Thank cool. you, Gary. Well, I appreciate your time. Thanks, Thanks for sure. coming. Thank you. All right, cheers, Pedro. I walked out to the airplane and strapped myself in for a quick flight around the pattern. One thing that's really nice about the Rotax 912 is that it starts so easy no matter the engine temperature. We taxied out to the little grass runway at Sun and Fun and the takeoff was almost a leap off the ground. The Rotex paired with the EPROP three-bladed propeller was a buttery smooth combination. It's always cool to see how the same engine can be used in so many different aircraft. That's a uh, I have one in my uh, RV-12. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love that little plane. You would think that having the engine directly in front in an open cockpit like this would be a windy experience, but it was actually very comfortable. Note that we're both wearing hats while flying and all you feel is a slight breeze on your shoulder. And speaking of breeze, it was a windy day at Sun and Fun and the airplane didn't seem to mind one bit. The Bat Hawk has a center stick control with a single brake lever and the throttle is on the pilot's left side. Your feet sit perfectly on the rudder pedals and the seats are simple but sit comfortably in a slightly reclined position. I also liked how the avionics were set in the center, leaving the view completely unobstructed. I took a look at the airspeed and we were cruising around 70 knots and still well under the Rotax max continuous RPM. I noted that I like seeing reliable engines like the 912 in aircraft like this and it definitely makes me more likely to fly or even own an airplane like the Bat Hawk. Gone are the days of two stroke powered ultralights with a 250 hour lifespan. I just love short grass runway operations like the setup they had at Sun and Fun, and the Bat Hawk is perfectly designed for them. And just for reference, the runway here is about 2,000 feet long, and we maybe used a quarter of it. Thank you all for watching. If you're interested in the Bat Hawk, I've posted all the vendor information in the video description. Until next time, blue skies, and I'll see you on the next flight. Here we are with the Bat Hawk, Gary Sideways, flying out of South Africa. 
Boom shakalaka. I don't know if you've had the spicy sauce from South Africa, but it's called the shakalaka sauce. And that's the way that Gary flies. Very spicy. Look at him banking, coming around the corner here.